Hello. So we are going to start with the next group of drugs in the anti-anginal series. And these are the beta blockers. Now these beta blockers, you know, uh, they are the only drugs amongst the anti-anginal drugs which actually are going to improve or they're going to prolong the survival rate in these patients. So none of the other drugs can do that. So they are really, really important. And one of the first line drugs which are used until and unless there's some contraindication to those, but otherwise they're always used. Now let's see what they do to help uh, the patients of angina. Now, see, this is the structure of the heart and you know, there are receptors, beta receptors are present. The beta one receptors are present almost everywhere in the heart. So they are present here. Uh, if I have to draw, or uh, let's say represent, these are the beta receptors present on the SA node. These are the beta receptors present on the AV node. Then the muscles, you know, they are present on the ventricle muscles mainly, which, are, which you are worried about. So they are present all over the heart. So what do they do uh, on the heart, you know, when they are stimulated? So we have, these are actually the beta 1 receptors because these are the ones which are present on the heart. So what happens when they get stimulated? So on the SA node, See, uh, our main aim is actually in the uh, in the anginal patients to decrease the cardiac workload. Okay? So definitely if you're using these drugs, they should decrease the cardiac workload or decrease. So beta 1 receptors on the SA node, what they're supposed to do, they are going to increase the heart rate. Right? So they are going to increase the heart rate. Beta 1 receptors on the AV node are going to increase the conduction from the atria to the ventricle. Beta 1 receptors on the ventricular muscles, ventricular muscles when they are stimulated, they are going to increase the contractility. So they have a positive inotropic effect, they have a positive chronotropic effect, they have a positive dromotropic effect. So all these effects are seen when you stimulate the beta 1 receptors on the heart. So definitely, if you are using beta blockers, if, if, if uh, whether they are beta 1 selective or beta non-selective, non-selective means they'll act both on the beta 1 and beta 2 or beta 1 selective, they're only going to block the beta 1 receptor. So whether you're doing, uh, giving those beta 1 selective or non-selective, they are going to block these beta 1 receptors and they are going to do the opposite things. So for example, what they're going to do is they're going to decrease the heart rate. They are going to decrease the conduction and they're going to decrease the contractility. Yes, contraction ka mojayi. So negative inotropic effect, negative chromotropic effect, negative chronotropic effect. Everything is opposite. Now, beta 2 receptors are also present uh, in the body. So, they are mainly present in the smooth muscles. Right? So, they are mainly present in the smooth muscles where they lead to. The beta 2 receptors are present on the <coughs> smooth muscles, whether they are on the, especially the bronchioles, <coughs> excuse me, on the vascular smooth muscles. They are going to cause relaxation. So, they are going to cause bronchodilatation. And on the vascular smooth muscles, they are going to cause vasodilatation. On the liver, they increase the breakdown of glycogen, which is called as glycogenolysis. And with this, they can increase the blood glucose levels. So these are the uh, effects of mainly on the beta 2 receptors and the beta non-selective, the beta blockers. Again, they are going to reverse all these effects. So they are going to cause bronchoconstriction, vasoconstriction, and um, what they're going to do, they are going to inhibit the release of the blood glucose. <clears throat> That's their role. Now, uh, which are the non-selective beta blockers that can both block the beta 1 as well as beta 2? These are propranolol, while the beta 1 selective ones are atenolol, then we have carvedilol and we have metoprolol, right? So these are cardioselective. So the advantages of using beta-1 selective blockers are that they are not going to 
have effects on the beta 2 so they will not cause bronco uh, constriction or vasoconstriction as such they are only going to have their effects on the beta 1 receptors on the heart so that's their advantage now we know that you know they are now uh, whatever they are doing they are going to chronotropy uh, negative hair inotropy negative hair conduction negative hair so how is it going to help these patients you know see because they are going to decrease the heart rate and they are going to decrease the contractions of the heart so automatically jab heart rate kam ho gaya contractions kam ho gayi that means it is going to decrease the cardiac work theek hai it is going to ask the cardiac a heart ko kahenge rest please rest don't do so much work because you are not getting your nutrition so please rest right so they are going to decrease the cardiac work and when the cardiac work is released agar use aaram karne ko mil raha hai so it will not lead to lot of diet and that is oxygen so definitely the oxygen demand will also be less and this helps the patients of angina theek hai another important thing is like when the heart rate is decrease so what will happen see <clears throat> abhi heart aise aise it's like oh, this is the heart rate now the heart is the number of you know the times in you know, the heart rate is slow so slow means the systole and the diastole theek okay? hai so slow hai so diastole bhi thoda time lagega and diastole is the relaxation time so it will get more time to relax because the rate is slow you know we are doing continuously hum aise 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 kaam kar rahe hain aur jab hum thoda sa dheere kaam karenge to hamari body ko thoda sa rest milta hai similarly heart agar ek to aise fata 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 kaam kar raha hai usko time nahi mil raha relax karne ka thoda sa time mil raha hai पर जब धीरे धीरे इट इज गोइंग टू यू नो यू नो द रेट हार्ट रेट जब धीरे धीरे होएगा सो क्या होएगा नंबर ऑफ टाइम्स सो इट विल गेट मोर टाइम टू इवन रिलैक्स सो रिलैक्सेशन टाइम ऑफ द हार्ट इज कॉल्ड एज डाइस्टोल द कॉन्ट्रैक्शन इज ड्यूरिंग सिस्टोल जब ब्लड पंप होता है फ्रॉम द लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल इन टू दयाटा एंड डाइस्टोल में द वेंट्रिकल्स दे आर गोइंग टू फिल सो मोर टाइम फॉर डाइस्टोल सो हार्ट रेट डिक्रीज मीन्स there is going to be increase in the diastole and when there is going to be increase in diastole there is going to be more filling theek okay? hai and when there is going to be more filling also uh, at the sub endocardial region you know uh, what happens there is because of the more filling uh, they say that there can be a uh, you know a better perfusion can result because of that but there is a problem also with diastole because jab diastolic volume badh jata it can press on the heart that is a tricky situation the filling is more though it can lead to more perfusion theek okay? hai but even it increases the end diastolic volume that's one problem with this group of drugs the third important thing is like during uh, you know what uh, happens with exercise suppose the patient is exercising this is with classical angina you know because kya hota hai the head attack is triggered during exercise so with exercise what happens when we exercise there is increase in the sympathetic activity and when there is increase in the sympathetic activity the noradrenaline is going to be released it is going to act on the beta receptors and it is going to cause an increase in the heart rate and increase in the this is noradrenaline here and increase in the contractions and that again going uh, that increases the oxygen demand and that's a problem with angina they don't have that much of oxygen to give right so when you give beta blockers to them these beta 1 blockers this is going to prevent this prevent it because it is already blocking the receptors so noradrenaline cannot act on these receptors and therefore there will be no increase in the demand so exercise tolerance badh jati hai so increase in the exercise tolerance so this is how it is going to benefit the patients of angina decrease in the oxygen demand and increase in the exercise tolerance and this is also good the only thing we have to take care of is the increased volume and diastole volume may not should not press upon the ventricles much okay so they are usually given in combination with nitrates because nitrates have their own effect of dilatation and they have their own effect of decrease in the demand so dono cheeze combine ho sakti hain and the patient can be benefited so how uh, you know this interaction is good nitrates with beta blockers so when you giving nitrates with beta blockers so what do nitrates do basically 
Nitrates cause vasodilatation. They decrease the preload mainly and the afterload. And because of decreasing in the preload, because there is decrease in the diastolic blood pressure, you know that the sympathetic activity gets uh, high and this leads to reflex tachycardia because of increase in the sympathetic activity. And this can be blocked by beta blockers. Okay, this can be blocked by beta blockers. So they are helpful when they're combined. So reflex tachycardia nahi hoga, demand nahi badegi oxygen ki for the heart. That's the first good thing about the interaction. The second good thing about the interaction we talked about that there is an increase in the end diastolic volume. So there is increase in the end diastolic volume uh, which is caused, which can be caused by the beta blockers. But nitrates, they take care of it because they are decreasing the preload. So they will decrease the end diastolic volume. So they will not allow much increase in the end diastolic volume. So uh, when you give these two drugs, there will be better perfusion without any higher increase in the end diastolic volume. So this is why they are preferred to be used with the beta blockers. Right? So this is the combination is really, really good. Adverse effects, as we know, happens with the beta blockers, more so with the non-selective beta blockers. The first problem is that patient can have bradycardia. Okay. The second important uh, problem is that it can cause insomnia or sleep disturbances. So giving them in night can be an issue. Right. Third is that in patients of diabetes mellitus, it can mask the signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia because when these patients have hypoglycemia, they are taking insulin, uh, the signs and symptoms due to sympathetic overactivity. Okay, there are signs and symptoms because of sympathetic overactivity, there can be tremors. And there is increase in the heart rate, palpitations and tremors and, uh, and like, uh, also there can be uh, increase in the glucose levels because your liver tries to make more glucose as a scene with the beta-1 receptor stimulation. But jo ye signs hai with the beta-1 blockers or the beta blockers, especially the non-selective beta blockers I'm talking about, they tend to block these effects. So patient will have no signs of hypoglycemia if he, if he goes into hypoglycemia because these are warning signs. If the patient ko pata lag jata hai ki I'm going into hypoglycemia, patient can eat something sweeter and you know get over the hypoglycemic episode. But when he doesn't know that he's going into hypoglycemia, patient can land up into hypoglycemic coma. And that's a very, very dangerous situation to be in, right? Then it can trigger because uh, the non-selective beta 1, they can trigger bronchoconstriction. So they should not be used in patients of asthma. It can trigger vasoconstriction. So not to be given in Reynolds disease. Here not to be given in cases of asthma. So all these are the various side effects just seen with beta blockers as is seen with the uh, you know what we've done already in the autonomic nervous system the same uh, side effects only. right so this was all about the beta blockers in angina so the important take home message from this particular lecture is that the beta 1 receptors are the main receptors in the heart right they are important and they lead to uh, SA node uh, activity so they can cause increase in the heart rate AV node conduction and ventricular muscles may they increase the contractility right this is what they do and when you give beta blockers, they will stop this because in heart, all these things, when the heart has an angina, ischemia, heart is already in a compromised state and it cannot do a lot of work. So what we can do is by giving drugs, we can decrease the amount of workload on the heart and that will help the heart. So increased heart rates, increased contraction is all uh, going to increase the cardiac work. So we are trying, trying to decrease that to an extent so that the heart is not overburdened, right? So we beta blockers, dete hai, it doesn't allow the heart to be overburdened. So it will decrease the myocardial oxygen demand. It does, what it does is decreases the demand. Myocardial oxygen demand kam kar deta hai and because it inhibits the sympathetic overactivity induced 
tachycardia so it increased uh, it helps in the exercise patient can exercise it becomes more tolerant to the exercise because ab wahan pe sympathetic over activity ki wajah se heart rate badhega nahi demand badhegi nahi and more perfusion because of the filling of the uh, ventricles uh, so they are given with nitrates because nitrates actually tend to cause the only problem with nitrates they cause reflex tachycardia and that can be taken care by the beta blockers and the beta blockers they tend to increase the and diastolic volume because they decrease the heart rate so more time for the filling of the heart but that can create a pressure on the ventricles and it will suppress or press upon the subendocardial area causing uh, more ischemia but that can be prevented when there is a decrease in preload already blood flow kam hai so zyada and diastolic volume badega nahi that so they can take care of each other's weak points and these are the adverse effects you have seen and these are all the adverse effects that we already covered in the chapter in the autonomic nervous system of beta blockers so for the details of the adverse effects you can refer to that lecture and that gives an overall picture of what non selective beta blockers can do so yes with this we come to the end of this particular lecture and in the next lecture i'm going to talk about the other drugs which are used in anti as an anti-anxiety right so till then take care study hard thank you so much